Hey, good morning. Could you please send the motion off to the Deputy Commissioner? I really need this continuance, and I hope she rules on it right away. Sure, no problem. What would you like to say? I'd like it to say the claimant seeks a continuance for the hearing schedule for November 1st, 2024. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add? No, that's it. Please upload it right away. Any ruling on the continuance motion? No, oh, no, there's nothing in web file yet. Hmm. She must be out of town. Hey, good morning. Hello. Hi, good morning. Hope you had a nice weekend. Have you heard anything on that continuance? No, there's nothing in web file yet. I wonder if the DC is sick. Hey, your motion was granted. Yes, finally. But for those DCs that use pre-hearing motions orders, you might have to wait an entire week for a ruling on your motion. And if your DC really is off that Friday, you won't get a ruling until the 28th of October. Do you recall completing this report of injury form, which perfectly outlines all the elements necessary to prove your claim on the date of your accident and is much clearer than that jumbled account of the injury you just gave during this hearing? Um, I, I don't seem to have that document. Uh, my paralegal must have forgotten to send a hard copy to you, but I see that it was sent by email. Can you access your email? Well, uh, I'm on a cell phone in my car. I can try, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose connection if I open email. Well, I'm afraid that if you can't open the email, you're going to lose your case. Okay, I'll try. All right. Let me see. Nope, uh, that's not it. Uh, there it is. Oh, wow, it's so small. I can't read it. Um, hold on, let me get my glasses. Okay, both parties have submitted medical designations. Uh, which will be entered into evidence as claimants and defendants exhibit one respectively. I see that the claimant has proposed five additional exhibits numbered one through five. Defense counsel, is there any objection to the claimant's proposed exhibits? No, Your Honor. Okay. Claimant's proposed exhibits one through five are admitted into evidence as claimant's exhibits two through six. Defense counsel has proposed three additional exhibits numbered one through three. Claimants counsel, is there any objection to defendants proposed exhibits one through three? No, Your Honor. Okay. Defendants proposed exhibits one through three are admitted into evidence as defendants exhibits one through three. Ms. Jones, could you please look at defendants exhibit one, which is a wage chart? Um, I thought defendant exhibit one was a medical designation. Uh, defendant's proposed exhibit one was the wage loss chart, um, but defendant's exhibit one is the medical designation and defendant's proposed exhibit one is now defendant's exhibit two. Wait, I I'm confused. I thought de defendant's exhibit two was the police report. No, just as I stated, defendant's proposed exhibit one was the wage loss chart. And defendant's proposed exhibit two was the police report. Um, but now defendant's exhibit one is the medical designation and defendant's exhibit two is the wage loss chart. And defendant's proposed exhibit two once removed is now defendant's exhibit three. Well, now I'm confused because I can clearly see on the hard copy that was provided to me that Defendant's Exhibit 2 is the police report. What's going on? Ms. Jones, please take a look at the police report. Defense counsel, please continue with your question. I certainly hope 
the full commission can keep all this straight on a review. Defense has not yet responded to my discovery, but I'm going to paper them into submission. I have sent them 40 interrogatories, some not really relevant, and 50 requests for production. It's going to take them forever to respond to this discovery. This will make them think twice about their denial of your claim. 40 interrogatories and pages and pages of requests for production? What is wrong with counsel? Well, two can play that game. I'm not responding to any of the requests for production. Peter Sweeney pointed out to me years ago, there is no provision for requests for production in the rules. I'm not responding and counsel can't make me. I understand, I understand your motions. You are arguing that claimant's counsel has failed to file complete responses to discovery. How many interrogatory requests for production of documents did you send? Your Honor, if I may, I would point out there is no provision for requests for production in the commission rules. Neither of you even look at the rules before you file these motions? Well, I have looked at them in the past, and I have been doing this for over 35 years. Yes, Your Honor, I've reviewed them in the past, and like counsel, I have years of experience handling workers' compensation cases. Well, the rules have been updated. They were updated in January of 2024. Now limited to 20 interrogatories, and I would bet even Peter Sweeney out in Utah is aware that 30 requests for production are now allowed. However, if you want to send more than them, you will need to request permission from the commission. Counsel, about those 20 interrogatories, 30 requests for production over the legal limit rule of 0.8 H. Let's talk about those. I hate when opposing counsel serves requests for admissions. It takes work to, work to respond to them and I'm going on a well-deserved 28-day vacation to Africa. They're just gonna have to wait until I get back. Oh, what a great trip. Of course, now I'm back to work. Uh, I need to get the request for admissions answered. I'm cutting it close to that 30-day timeline. A jerk! I can't believe that opposing counsel is asking that the commission deem the request for admissions admitted. She should know what the rules say. Your Honor, the request for admissions I sent in this case were not answered within 21 days as required by Rule 1.8i. Therefore, I would ask that all requests for admissions be deemed admitted. 21 days. Better call my malpractice carrier. Uh, Linda, we have the hearing for the Edward case next week. We're claiming TTD um, January 2nd and continuing. Do we have any medical records or evidence of disability at all? No, but we've requested the records. When? Last week. I'm not sure we're going to get them before the hearing. Okay. Uh, who's the opposing counsel in this? Uh, they just noted an appearance. It's Lori from Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> okay. Hey, Lori. I saw you just got into the Edwards case. Are you interested in a continuance on this? Yes, I would love that. I am totally jammed next week and would love to not go to a hearing. Okay, great. Uh, I'll write the deputy commissioner and tell her that we both agree to a continuance so we can take this off the docket next week. Yes, I would totally love that. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. All right. Dodged a bullet there. I'm so glad opposing counsel agreed to a continuance. Good morning, Your Honor. 
I'm not entirely sure why we're here. I guess you didn't get my letter that I filed last week stating that both parties agreed to a continuance of this case. Yeah, um, I received your letter. Um, however, you both should be aware that I am in control of my docket. This case has been pending for three months. Counsel, I don't think it's in your client's best interest to continue this matter. Rule 2.2 says a continuance are, will be granted at the discretion of the commission upon a showing of good cause. Well, I don't find that your failure to obtain the most recent medical records good cause. And I don't find that your client's failure to provide you with their records and files good cause. So let's hear this claim. Your Honor, we're going to have to withdraw this claim. Thank you for confirming the claimant's claim and the employer's defenses. Is there anything to which the parties can stipulate before we begin testimony? Yes, please, Deputy Commissioner. We stipulate most of the portions of the claim presented. I've covered this with the claimant's counsel and we agreed. I didn't agree with anything you said. We offered agreements that were not signed. I sent a stipulated order that outlined the body parts and injuries that we accepted. We've paid TTD and I've paid medicals on these, these items and- You refused to add both knees were substantially injured. We copied verbatim from the few medicals we received. We accepted a torn hamstring on the only knee you claimed and the doctor told this was the cause of the knee pain. There is no medical evidence for a second knee. Really? I object to that. Claimants counsel, you have only claimed one knee. You have submitted nearly 1,800 pages of a medical designation. Can you direct me to where there is medical evidence to support a second one? No, I can't, Your Honor. Um, my client just went to the doctor today um, and he said at that time that both knees were injured. So I would ask to leave the record open for that medical report. No objection. I will accept the stipulations offered by the defense as they appear to take full responsibility for those portions of the accident. I object. Denied. Claimant's counsel, I'll leave the record open for 14 days for the receipt of the office notes. During that time, counsel, I am instructing you to winnow down this medical designation and remove the medical records that cover the portions of your claim to which the defense has stipulated they accept. Please draft a letter to the Deputy Commissioner and file as a motion to, to strike. Today I received a web file that claims counsel has added a new medical records, several going back to before the accident to her medical designation. She did not include the office notices of the day of the hearing. Instead, there's a checkoff letter to the doctor dated two days after the hearing. This is not what the record was left open to receive. The record was closed except for one set of missing office notes. These records cannot be considered. Is this Miss Wackadoo as the attorney? But of course. <laughs> Miss Wiggins, take a note. Issue a subpoena to Dr. Taylor for Madam Weakney's medical records. He is in New York City. Look up the address. Then issue a witness subpoena for Mr. Anderson to appear in Fairfax to testify. I'll mail him the script so he'll know what to say. Get these out today as the hearing is Friday. And since I've never been to Fairfax before, give me driving directions from here in Huntington, West Virginia. Are we ready to begin? I need a continuance. I haven't received a response from my subpoena to Dr. Taylor, and my key witness, Mr. Anderson, isn't here. I object. I haven't received copies of any subpoenas, and it, any witnesses aren't identified in discovery. Counsel? Here's a copy for both of you. Now, this wasn't certified that it was sent to me. Both of these are invalid subpoenas. You can't issue a subpoena a couple of days before a hearing, and you certainly can't subpoena someone in a different state. I represent Liberty Biberty Insurance Company, and in West Virginia, we certainly can. Well, sir, we're not in Kansas or West Virginia. I've never seen or heard of you 
and I'm not showing you in the Virginia Bar Association's roster here online right now that you are a licensed Virginia attorney. West Virginia was part of Virginia one time, and there really isn't a difference now is there. Madam Claimant's Counsel, do you have a motion you want to make? 